Hello and welcome to DW Travel Live on YouTube. My name is Lukas and today I'm gonna take you on a tour through my lovely hometown, Leipzig. Hmm? And believe it or not, it just stopped raining. So a couple of minutes ago, it was still very, very rainy and right now it just stopped because I think the weather god knew that I was <laughs> going to do this YouTube live. Again. My name is Lucas, I'm from DW Travel and we're live on YouTube and I'm gonna take you on a tour through Leipzig in Eastern Germany. Kabir is asking, hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. A couple of minutes ago, I wasn't that fine actually uh, because it was um, raining and I thought uh, this might crash my, my uh, YouTube live, but uh, it just stopped raining like three, three or four minutes ago and now it's the weather is almost perfect. Yes, Sue is saying empty streets here in Leipzig. Uh, more or less. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's packed, but there are some people. And as you can see on my right hand side, um, the people are sitting on the outside area in restaurants. Ah, Mario Jose Arnadillo is also connected. Hello, hello. There are still some people joining this live stream, so again, it's me, <laughs> Lucas from DW Travel, live on YouTube. And today it's time for a little tour through my hometown, Leipzig in Eastern Germany. The city has almost 600,000 inhabitants and I live here since 2013, so nine years. All right, my tour through Leipzig uh, starts here at uh, Market Square. I'm gonna tell you something about it um, in a bit. Then we head to uh, St. Nicholas Church. Um, we head to Augusta Square. We head to the university. So I'm gonna take you to a couple of places in the city center of Leipzig. This tour takes about an hour, an hour and a half. Yes, and Johanna was asking, hello, hello, hello. Um, if you can sit in a restaurant with, with or without a, um, a COVID test. And um, I think it depends. <laughs> Actually, you have to have a COVID test and then uh, they check it and you have to put your name on list and then you can sit on the outside of a restaurant, uh, but with um, a limited amount of people. So um, you can't be there with a big group. And oh, that's the sun shining on my little Leipzig. All right. Uh, Yvonne is asking uh, if clothes shops are open. I think they're not open yet. So it's just um, restaurants and if um, shops, normal shops like for clothes are open, not like for the public, I think you have to have um, um, a time slot and then you can go uh, visit uh, the shops. For example, this shop, they have clothes, but you need, you need a certain time slot and then you can go there. So I think they are just waiting for their turn to go in. But I can't go uh, in just like that. I have to plan it. Johanna is saying sound and picture are fine for me. I hope so because last time um, <laughs> we had some complications. Um, I think with the sound. 
uh, and and the picture. But right now, I think uh, the connection is stable and the sound. I hope it's good. I hope you can hear me well. Okay. So this is Leipzig, and right now, uh, Mot is asking why are you not giving the answer? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't read it. Uh, maybe you, you put your, your question again. So we're live here and when I'm talking or looking somewhere else, I can't read all the questions on the screen. So you keep, you keep posting them and then I try to answer them, okay? Sue is asking if someone is singing in the background. Yes. <laughs> Over there, it's a group. They're here uh, regularly. Anyway, <laughs> I was about to start my little tour in Leipzig. So this is the market square. It's a large square right in the city center. So this is actually the heart of Leipzig. This is called the market square. So as the name says, <laughs> it's a place for all kinds of markets. Also the Christmas market. Uh, that hopefully will take place in November, December this year. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that we'll have a Christmas market here. Please speak slowly, uh, Mr. Afsal. Okay, I tried to speak slowly. <laughs> this, actually, you're not the only one telling me that. You know, when I speak to my wife, she says, speak slowly. When I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking for, um, uh, uh, to other people, they always tell me, speak slowly. Or when we're uh, shooting check-in, our travel program, uh, I think from time to time I'm speaking too fast. So right now I try to speak slower, okay? You can remind me of that. So this is a place for all kinds of markets. Right now there's no market, still it's the market square. And this building. Are you German by birth? Uh, Kabir is asking, yes, I'm German by birth. I was born in Frankfurt. What was your last travel destination in Germany? I went to Lake Constance. Uh, with two colleagues from Deutsche Welle, that's in southern Germany. Okay, I would like to show you this building, so I got to the other side of the, of the square, so you can see it better. Ah, this is beautiful, I think that's a good shot, because this is the old town hall. As you can see, it dominates the square, and it is the oldest preserved building here, built in the Renaissance style, from 1556 to 1557. This is the old town hall. Well, and maybe you can see it. The asymmetrical structure. Yeah. So the tower is not in the middle. You could say it's approximately in the golden section. I haven't ever been to Bangladesh, but I'd love to go there. Marco is connected from Maracaibo, Venezuela. Um, hello to Venezuela. Hello, Marco. Gracias. <laughs> Me encanta también hablar en español, pero este stream es en inglés. So, like I said, the tower is not in the middle, it's in the golden section. So. Uh, a creative idea to <laughs> build this town hall. And if we go a little closer, you can see that there's a bend right there. It's like three degrees. So maybe you could call it a kink. So it's not like perfect smooth like this. It's a bend like that. We can see it from the other side. So let's go there. So it's the old town hall and I think <laughs> you're curious, hmm, where's the new town hall? We're gonna pass the new town hall as well. But this is the old town hall and today 
It houses the Stadtgeschichtliches Museum, so the Museum of the City's History. That's right this way. So now it's a museum, it's not a town hall anymore. Okay, I think from, from this point of view you can see it. So the building is not straight. There's a kink here, so it bends a little over, right here. Angela Weber is saying, want to visit Leipzig, looks great, and more of what was Eastern Germany. Yes, you're welcome. Funky Derek is saying, Druf, sir. Yes, I know, we have a lot of big fans of Druf. Unfortunately, I'm not Druf, I'm Lukas. But Druv is on the channel anyway, so you can check out the other videos after watching this live stream. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, some of the restaurants are already open. Here in Leipzig since I think uh, like two weeks or something. Um, so you can sit on the outside. You have to prove that you have a negative COVID test result. And then uh, you can sit there, not in big groups. I think up to four or five people. I'm not quite sure, um, but it's possible to have a beer, for example, here, or eat delicious pizza over there, or to drink a cocktail at night over there. That's all possible. Would you recommend visit, weekend visit to Leipzig for someone studying in Amsterdam? Uh, that's a question. Of course, of course, it's, it's always worth a visit um, coming to Leipzig. And from Amsterdam, well, I think it's a long train ride, but I don't know. Maybe you can head here uh, uh, Friday in the morning and then head back uh, Sunday in the evening and that's worth it. This is Barfußgässchen. It's like a very, very um, touristy place here in Leipzig. So as you can see, there are a lot of people and it's packed there. So the restaurants on the left and on the right, they're open and they put their chairs out and their, um, their tables. So it's, it's, it's very packed there. So the people can sit outside eating, drinking. I just love that. Um, because it's possible right now and it's been closed like for six months or seven months. But I'm not here to visit a restaurant or to have a beer. I'm here to take you on a little tour through my lovely Leipzig. So my name is Lucas. We're live on YouTube for DW Travel. And I'm here at the Market Square in Leipzig. My mother visited Frankfurt over 30 years ago. Great. That's the town I was born. Is Leipzig vegetarian fruit food friendly? That's a good question because I'm a vegetarian. And yes, it is actually all the towns or cities in Germany, I think they ha always have a, um, a, a lot to offer concerning food. And um, there's always a vegetarian or even a vegan option um, if you want to eat. So um, that shouldn't be a problem when you're traveling, uh, when you're visiting cities in Germany. Might be a little windy, um, but I can't change that. Sue's saying, except Bavaria, for the vegetarian food. It depends where you are. When you're in Munich, I don't know, or Nuremberg, I think you, you can get your vegetarian food or your uh, vegan food. Maybe not in the, in the small towns and in the, uh, in the very small towns, you know. I don't, 
I don't think you, you get everything you need uh, when you're vegetarian or vegan, but in a city, it's, it's always possible. So, let's say bye-bye to Market Square. Old Town Hall here, some of the restaurants. This is the Market Square, and there is the so-called Barfußgässchen, a small um, street where a lot of restaurants are as well, but very packed. That's on that side. Okay, it's getting windy, so... Let's leave the market square. Kabir is asking asking me to take him or take you on a tram. Uh, no, <laughs> I won't do that. Sorry. Um, you need a special permit to uh, to film in a tram. So I'll just walk around and show you a bit of the city, and I think that's all right. You don't need a tram, but I can show you some trams, not from the inside, on the other side of the city center when I had there. But just leaving the market square, there's another highlight coming up. I can already see it, but you can't. Just give me a second. Here we are. This is beautiful. It's St. Thomas Church. The group that's singing there, it's, it's still in the background, right? If we go further this way, we won't hear them anymore. St. Thomas Church, right in the city center of Leipzig. Funky Derek is saying, wow, I think <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. Yes, I love this church. It's really beautiful. And I'm not the only one who loves this church. The tourists who come here, um, they love it too. So they always take a picture here at this spot and on the other side where I'm taking you to. Um, because there was a very, very, very famous composer um, whose main place of activity was this church. He had a boys choir and so on. Um, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you know who I'm talking about. I will, I will show you just, uh, just in a minute. Take a look at that. Ah, oh, beautiful. St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. You can see where we're heading later on to Neues Rathaus, New Town Hall. Ah, Manolo! <laughs> Johann Sebastian Bach. That's right, the famous composer. He worked in this church. Bach, yes, I think you already know. Maybe some of you um, just googled who used to work here. Um, or maybe you just knew. <laughs> but let's see. Delete it. Here we are. Johann Sebastian Bach. That's him. Or, well, it's a statue, <laughs> but that's Johann Sebastian Bach. So the people who come here, they always do this, like this, and then they pose, you know. Mm -hmm. 
sorry for the wind. I'm trying to, to, to get closer to the church. So that's the church. And inside of the church, there's Bach's grave. All right. We won't go inside right now because I'm gonna take my, uh, continue my tour over there. Uh, but you can check out this channel, this YouTube channel, and there's a Leipzig video uh, from January. And uh, in January, I went inside with my colleague and we filmed all that. So you can check it out on this channel. So again, St. Thomas Church. What does Kirche mean? Kirche is church. So Thomas Kirche, St. Thomas Church. Again, Bach, the famous German composer. This is his main place of activity, a place of pilgrimage for all Bach fans. Like I said, the people come here to take a picture, to see his grave, all the music fans, but in general, uh, tourists from all over the world. Well, from 1723, Bach conducted the Thomana Chor. It's one of the oldest voice choirs in Germany. And he was cantor for 27 years and died in 1750. Flo is asking, will you walk to the big battle monument? Flo, I'd love to, but I think then um, this tour might take three or four hours because it's, um, it's not in the city center. You, you gotta um, look a little further to this way, uh, walk a little further that way. Um, but um, we went there and we showed it in the other Leipzig video, which is on the channel. So today I'm just on foot, um, I'm just walking around and this is uh, a little too far. Maybe next time. Okay. I think that's enough of Bach. We need more Lucas. Let's continue our tour. Bye bye, Johann Sebastian Bach. And I'm gonna leave the city center for a second over there. We walk away the round, we walk around there, and then we can see um, the new town hall. I've already shown you the old town hall in the city center at the market square. And right now I'm heading to the new town hall. For those of you who've just connected, you know what you're getting. Lucas live on DW, travel on YouTube, and there are about 50 people connected right now. I hope you're not bored. I hope you're well entertained. And thank God it's not raining. Okay, before, you, before I show you the new town hall, let's head to the other side of the church, of St. Thomas Church. Like I said, I'm a big fan of this church. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna sh show you on the other side. Oh, hallo Lucas, viele liebe Grüße aus La Paz, Bolivia, Südamerika. Gladys. Gladys, La Paz, Bolivia. Mm. Me gustaría hacer un YouTube live en La Paz, Bolivia, de hecho, pero bueno. Okay, this is the other side of St. Thomas Church I've just shown you. It's really beautiful. Gladys, <laughs> hello to Bolivia. I'd love to go there actually. Um, maybe next year, I don't know. I've been there a couple of times and I'd love to go there again. I love Bolivia. Ah, 
who do we have here? On our way to the new town hall, there's more Bach coming up. There are people connected from Brazil. Olá, tudo bem? Eu adoro Brasil. Don't worry about the weather, is Marco saying. Yes, I'm not worried anymore because it's not raining anymore. But I can tell you, um, when it's raining, it's, it's really difficult to, um, to film with the equipment. So I, I try to avoid that. But I, I don't have any influence on the weather. So I'm just happy it's not raining anymore. Anurak is asking, what languages do you speak? I speak German, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and a little French. Sue is asking where the big known park is. I think she's asking about Clara Zetkin Park. That's down that way, but we are gonna go down this way and then we head over there. And from here, you can already see a part of the new town hall. It's this building on the other side. So let's go over there. You can keep asking questions. I'll try to answer them. If I can see them, like I told you, it's a live stream. So they pop up and disappear. Manolo is asking, is Leipzig an expensive city to live? No, it's not. If you compare Leipzig to Munich, Berlin, Cologne, Hamburg, Frankfurt. It's actually pretty cheap. So, um, this is why it's very popular with students. David is asking, are you from Leipzig originally? No, I'm not. I was born in Frankfurt. Then I moved to Hamburg and Hanover. I've been living in Cologne. And now I'm in Leipzig. And I'm taking, to you, taking you to the new town hall in Leipzig. Do you like any other city more than Leipzig? Uh, I think I could live easily in another place in, in Germany, um, but I like it here. So there's, there's no reason to, to go somewhere else since I'm very happy here, but I could move somewhere else and I think I'd be happy there too. So like I said, I've been living in other places in Germany before and I, I liked it everywhere, I think. Okay, this is the new town hall. So this is all part of the new town hall. But we need to get to the other side so you can see it. Or you can enjoy the view better. Oscar Gonzalez is asking, would you like to learn Italian? Yes, I would love to speak Italian too. Um, and there's always a good reason to speak Italian. I love Italy. I've been there a couple of times. I, Italy just won a very important uh, European song contest. And uh, the song was in, in Italian. And, well, I'd love to sing along, so I'd love to speak Italian. Maybe one day. That's a Catholic church. But I'm gonna walk around here. 
over there and then you can see the new town hall it's so huge so i have to go a bit further in order to give you a good view it's windy i hope it's not too annoying And there's a tram. Just like you want to see. Greetings from El Salvador. So your your favorite town in Germany is Leipzig. Nice to hear that. Muchísimas gracias. A mí también me encanta esta ciudad. Y me encanta dar un, un paseo aquí para que ustedes vean. Be careful when crossing. I am careful, always. Now it's red lights, so I'm waiting. And we turn around. And we can see the new town hall. There's a tower behind this uh, part of the building. And you, if we go to that side, you can see it better. All right, that's the view I wanted you to have. So I'll turn around and... Da -da -da -da. That's the new town hall of Leipzig. Yes, the city is full of history. It's the new town hall since 1905. It's the seat of the Leipzig city administration. It's built in the style of historicism on parts of the grounds of the medieval Pleissenburg. And the town hall tower, you can see from up he from here, this is a landmark. So you have the silhouette of Leipzig. You can always see this tower, it's always in the silhouette. And usually you can go up to the top and you have a beautiful view of all the city. This crossing here in the background, it's pretty busy, so maybe it's too loud and a little annoying. I'll head to the other side so you can have a better view. How do you find the public transport in Leipzig? It's good. I do basically everything by bike. But the public transport system in Leipzig is, is very good. How much is it to visit the tower? I think it's about 5 euros. I don't know for sure and because of the pandemic it's closed but after the pandemic you can go up there i think it's five euros i've been up there um, a couple of years ago but i can't remember the price i think it was about five euros so not too expensive Okay, right across the new town hall, there's a huge square 
with a big nice building in the background you can see right now. Maybe you guys know uh, what's that building. What's that building? <laughs> Do you speak Russian instead of English as a second language? Um, no, nope, I don't speak Russian. But the people who grew up in this area of Germany, so in Eastern Germany, um, they learned Russian at school as far as I know. So a lot of people who live in this region, um, they, they know some Russian. No, it's not the parliament. It could be, actually. A good guess. It's a beautiful building. But it's not the parliament. Federal courthouse, David is saying. Yes, federal administrative court. In German, Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Repeat after me. Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Federal Administrative Court. It is the former Reichsgericht building in Leipzig. It was built in 1895. And it is the court of the, you could say, last resort for generally all cases of administrative law, mainly disputes between citizens and the state. Well, I've been to the Bundesverwaltungsgericht before as a reporter for uh, another TV station and um, they were discussing a case about a rapper, a famous German rapper call, uh, called Bushido. And according to a ruling by the Federal Administrative Court, the rapper's album has rightly been classified as harmful to minors. So those are the kind of cases they, they discuss here in this building behind me. Federal Administrative Court. Gladys, die deutsche Sprache ist wirklich schwer, aber diese Sprache ist eine echte Herausforderung für mich. So, The lady from uh, La Paz, Bolivia is saying it's a, a huge um, challenge speaking German. Yes, it is. Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Bundesverwaltungsgericht. It's not that easy. Nicole is asking if Leipzig is my favorite city. For the moment, moment yes, it is my favorite city. But like I said before, I could live easily in other cities and I'd fall in love with other cities as well, I think. But a couple of years in Leipzig makes me, makes me a big, a huge Leipzig fan. Sue said I look royal in front of this building. Yeah, I do look royal. You like this? Maybe you like this? Maria Jose is saying, Esta cerca de Albertina Bibliothek. So I'm close to a library. Yes, I am. So the, the cool students of Leipzig, they go around this way. And on the other side, there's a library. And um, you need a permit to go inside. But that's where the cool kids in Leipzig study. At Albertina Bibliothek. Okay. So this is the Bundesverwaltungsgericht. The people are already asking, where do you go? Well, leaving Bundesverwaltungsgericht, the Federal Administrative Court, and we head back to the city center on that side, 
passing a Catholic church and the new town hall, and then we go to another famous monument. One last look. Hope to meet the DW check-in team and you stay at maybe Nicole and be lucky enough to take you on the tour in Germany. Yes, thank you. And Thanks for watching Check In, our regular uh, travel program. Because um, a month or two months ago, we started producing again. So we had a little break, a pause due to the pandemic, but right now we're producing again. So we're shooting the regular uh, travel show Check In, or in Spanish, Escapate, featuring Nicole Fröhlich and me. And of course, we're not only on television, we're also here on YouTube with a couple of great videos. Among them, the famous Druf. Druf from India. <laughs> Yvonne is repeating after me, Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Bundesverwaltungsgericht. Ah, good question. No need to wear a mask in Leipzig. That's a tough one. So there are parts in the city center where you still have to wear a mask and other parts not. So they put up signs and from time to time it's a little confusing if you still have to wear a mask or not. So if there are a lot of people that put a mask on and if you're inside somewhere, of course you have to put a mask on, but right now here it's okay. Leipzig was one of Napoleon's losses. Yes, it was. Napoleon was here and lost. Uh, a couple of hundred years ago. And we have a monument for that too. Okay, green light. Oh, it just turned red. And I have to wait. So, while we wait here, You can take a look at the new town hall again. Lukas and Druf are going to meet in June. Yes, we are meeting. So, um, Druf and me, we will be together live here on YouTube too in June. That's the plan. I hope it works out. I'm curious to get to know this guy. This is the new town hall, it's Neues Rathaus. Green light. I gotta hurry. You're asking about the traffic? I'd say this is normal traffic right now. Last year, um, when the pandemic started, there was less traffic, way less traffic. Less people, less traffic, less everything. So I did a tour uh, live on Instagram like a year ago, and there was nothing going on. Some people in the streets. And right now, I wouldn't say it's back to normal, but there's a lot of movement in the city. So almost back to normal. And just so you know, I'm always prepared and I stick to rules, so I have my mask on me, always. If it's mandatory, I put it on.
Lukas Volta is asking or wants to know more about the Neues Rathaus. So this is the new town hall. The old town hall is in the city center on the other side. And this building was built in 1905. Oh, sorry. It is the seat of the Leipzig city administration. And this building right here on the right side, that's a Catholic church. If you ask me, it looks like a spaceship, but it's a new Catholic church. So on my right, Catholic church. On my left, new town hall. Coming up, a pedestrian crossing. So while I wait for the green light, we can take another quick view at the new town hall. Catholic church, new town hall. New town hall, Catholic church, Lucas. Aston, I, I read what you, what you put down, that you hate the sound uh, of the, the pedestrian lights. I hate it too, but I think it's got a good reason. So um, people who can't see a uh, green or red light, they can hear it. So if there's the sound, they know, okay, it's still red light. I think that's the reason, and it's a good reason. Anyway, we're heading back into the city center away from the traffic that was a little exhausting and annoying so let's head back to the city center and to another famous monument I'd like to show you uh, here we have the sign the sign I was talking about earlier So, you gotta wear a mask, 
basically all day long if you're entering the, to the city center. That's where the, the shops are. That's where a lot of people are and that's where you have to wear a face mask. But not here where I'm standing because we're heading into a park. The brick church looks modern and new. Yes, it's been built a couple of years ago. It's pretty new. Yeah, Kabir, dark clouds above. Yes, there are dark clouds above and it's starting to rain right now. <sighs> I can't change that. So let's keep up the good mood and keep walking through this beautiful city of Leipzig. I hope it's not too shaky. How does it say Völkerschlachtdenkmal? Völkerschlachtdenkmal. The monument to the Battle of the Nations, I think. That's the translation. But right now, we're in a beautiful park. And there's a monument I'd like to show you. This is Schiller. So this monument honors the German poet Friedrich von Schiller, 1759 to 1805. Maybe you know him. Famous German poet. And the reason for his first and longer stay in Leipzig in 1785 was a lack of money. So Schiller basically stayed here because he was broke and he received financial help from the rich citizen of Leipzig, Gottfried Körner. So if you're broke, just come to Leipzig and give Gottfried Körner, uh, Körner a call and he might help you out. So here we have two German poets, Lukas and Friedrich Schiller. I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm not a poet. I'm just a reporter who's doing YouTube live while it's raining. This is a monument for Friedrich Schiller. And there is a famous high rise in Leipzig. We're gonna see from up close. Coming up. Kabir is asking if this is an iPhone. Yes, it's an iPhone from Deutsche Welle. I hope. <laughs> I hope it's waterproof. This is another good and nice thing about the city. So you have a lot of green spaces. We're in the city center, so you can hear the tram, you can see the high rise over there, the shops down there, and look at this beautiful green space. So when the sun's out, people are just lying around, um, getting a suntan. And in winter, a couple of years ago, um, I've built a snowman over there. I remember that. See? So we're not in a forest, it's just a park right in the city center of Leipzig. My hometown. And right now, we're heading to this high rise and to the university. Let's cross the street.
Another great view. Of the city high rise in the city center of Leipzig. Hello from Vietnam. Hello back from Germany. Maria Jose is saying, Se escucha una sirena. So she could hear uh, sirens in the background. Yes, that might be an ambulance, and you can hear people singing, then you can hear the traffic. So this is all happening right now. It's 4 p.m. here in Germany in the afternoon. My name is Lucas and I'm taking a little tour through Leipzig. This is all life. So people are asking, what's this skyscraper? Yes, this is a good point of view. I was waiting for that. Perfect. Right here, it's the so-called city house. It's a high rise, 142 meters high. So 466 feet. It's the tallest multi-story building in Leipzig, 34 stories. And it's designed in a shape of an open book. So we need a little fantasy here. So the other side looks like that as well. So it's hard to, to show you, but it's like an open book to that side. It might be an open book. You can interpret whatever you want, but the city high-rise was designed as an open book. It was built between 1968 and 1972. It was originally part of the university, and now it is owned by the US investment bank, Merrill Lynch, and rented to the public broadcaster, MDR. And maybe you can see it up there, MDR, that's a public broadcaster here in Eastern Germany. And it's also rented to the European Energy Exchange and to a restaurant that's on top of it. And of course, up there, there, there's a viewing platform. I've been there twice. And since I'm afraid of heights, this is not a place to be for me, but I can tell you have a beautiful view from up there. When you're not afraid of heights, I definitely recommend you uh, the viewing platform on the city high rise here in Leipzig. Another siren. There's a lot going on here. Now it's not an ambulance, it's the police. This is the so-called Gewandhaus in the background. And um, maybe you already noticed. So I just walk a couple of meters and then there's another building I can tell you something about. So this is the city center of Leipzig. Um, if you come here, you can see a lot in just two hours. It's, uh, it's beautiful. And everything on foot, you know, I don't, need, I don't need a bicycle. I can do everything on foot. Harmony with nature, bird singing. Well, the harmony is back there. Here it's just city traffic, but yes, you're right. So on my left, this is the so-called Gewandhaus, the concert hall. I'm gonna tell you something about it just in a minute. I need a good spot. As far as I know, they converted the concert hall into a COVID test testing place. It's a good thing, but I think the people are happy when it turns uh, when it turns into a concert hall again, and you don't need any more COVID tests. 
But right now, yes, yeah, you can see it from here. Down there, you can get tested uh, for COVID-19. Uh, this is a nice spot. Look at this fountain. Beautiful. All right. Actually, this is the spot I wanted to go to to tell you a little more about this square here, about the university, about the so-called Gewandhaus, a concert hall. And on the other side, you can see the opera. But I do not want to overwhelm you with information. So, <laughs> step by step, everything. Hello from Thailand. Wow, there are people connected from all over the world. So we have viewers from this region. We have viewers from Thailand, from Bolivia, from Venezuela, from Vietnam, from India, from Bangladesh. I'm happy that you're all there and connected with DW Travel live on YouTube. My name is Lucas and this is my hometown, Leipzig. All right. This looks like a church, but it's not a church. Like I told you before, Leipzig is popular with students. It's basically cheap, modern, young, creative. And some people call the city New Berlin. This is like always a topic. Uh, a lot of people, not some people, not a lot of people. Some people say it's, it's a New Berlin because maybe Leipzig has the spirit Berlin had a couple of years ago. That would be an explanation. But still, the cities are very different. Um, but yes, in some parts you, you might recognize uh, a little Berlin in Leipzig. I think people from Berlin don't like to hear that. So let's cut it. <laughs> anyway, it's popular with students and this is not a church. It's the university. It's the main building of the university. Let's get close. Let's get closer. It was founded in 1409. It's the second oldest university in Germany. Hello from Costa Rica. Hello back from Germany. So like I, like I said, founded in 1409. It's the second oldest university in Germany. It's not a church, it's a university. And it looks beautiful. Right next to it, the city high rise. Let's get a little closer. So celebrities like the German poet Goethe and the composer Richard Wagner, they studied here. In this university, of course, back then when those guys studied in the building behind me, it didn't look like that. So this is basically um, uh, a little reconstructed. <laughs> Hello from Bogota. Hello back to Colombia. I know Colombia has some complications right now. I hope you're well, you and your family. I've been to Colombia a couple of weeks ago and it was, yeah, it was intense and complicated and the people were upset. So I hope um, you're all well over there in Colombia. Okay. So, a part of the university looks like a church, but it's not, like I said. Till 1968, you could find here the Paulina Kirche. So actually, in this spot, there used to be a church from the 13th century. But the city's administration back then destroyed the church to give more space to the university. And it was only after the fall of the Berlin Wall that reconstruction began based on the original. So this might be like a church from the 13th century. And it was completed in 2017. 
So, the building behind me is very young, like me. <laughs> no, it's younger, it's from 2017. And it's the university. So, I didn't go to this university, I studied in Hamburg, but the people who went here, they told me it's beautiful. They like the modern style, everything's new, a nice library, a nice little restaurant for the students. So, um, uh, actually pretty beautiful. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> and now it's even sunny, I can't believe it. Before I started the stream, it was raining and cold, and right now it's sunny. The, the weather is so, um, I don't know, strange in Germany, at least in this part of Germany. Okay, so as you can see, I'm walking around on the same square the whole time. Because this is another main square in, uh, in Leipzig, but it's the, the largest one. It's Augustus Square. So um, you have a lot of um, important buildings here. Behind me, that's the opera. This is the university, yeah? Used to be a church, uh, but now it's a university. That's the city high-rise I told you about. And here we have uh, the Gewandhaus. Gewandhaus, that's a place for concerts, a concert hall. So right now you can see only half of it because of the tram, but it's the venue of the famous Gewandhaus Orchestra. With about 185 musicians, it is considered the world's largest professional orchestra over there. And, like I said, uh, no music right now. <laughs> they have a COVID test center down there. But maybe, I don't know, a couple of months and then they have concerts again over there. Let's hope so. Well, the square I'm walking on it's Augustusplatz. And normally there's a fountain. It's not turned on right now, but you can see there's a nice um, image, reflection of the opera. Actually, this is a good picture. Huh? If I could take a selfie, I'd do it like this. Okay, so this, this square here is Augustusplatz and with 40,000 square meters, it is one of the largest city squares in Germany. Since 1837, it has been named after Friedrich August I and he was the first ruler of the Saxonian Kingdom. Saxony, that's the federal state Leipzig is located in. And you can see it and you can hear it. It's the most important junction of the Leipzig tram network, or one of the most important junctions. You can see there are trams coming in and out. And it's huge. So let's do a 360. City high rise, Gewandhaus. Hotel, car, <laughs> and we have the beautiful opera with a nice reflection.
Is quarantine in Leipzig for foreign travelers? Um, yes. <laughs> it's still, we're still in a pandemic, so there's still quarantine. Not only in Leipzig, but in Germany and in Europe in general. It depends where you're coming from. So if it's a high risk area or not. And depending on that, you have to quarantine or not. What are these small white things circled? I think you're talking about that. Yes. Um, I think it's a ventilation shaft of the parking space below us. And there's access too. So you, if you have a car and you come to the city center, you park it down there. And on the other side, there's an there's a access. There's an access or you can get in or get out. And I think those are ventilation shafts. I think. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is nice. This is really nice. All fairly new buildings. Um, you think you, you, you know what happened to the old ones? Of course. A lot of buildings um, have been destroyed in Second World War. Um, some during the, uh, the era of uh, the East German, um, the German Democratic Republic, uh, or they have been reconstructed, so a lot of buildings that are new, um, more or less new. So I remember that building on the other side. It used to be a post office, like, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And this building was basically destroyed and they had to reconstruct it. And I think uh, two or three years ago, they re reopened it. Now they have a fitness studio down there and a hotel with a bar up there. <clears throat> Where is your favorite place in Leipzig? Eggplant is asking. Wait, um, the, the favorite place depends on the weather too. And if we have good weather in summertime, I love the Kulkwitzer See. That's a lake. And the water is just perfect. It's refreshing. It looks like the Caribbean, more or less. And I love to be there, swim there, just lay on the beach. And that's not too far from here. I think it's 30 minutes by tram, or you can take a, you can rent the car, or you can take a, a bike. Someone is telling me about the Leipziger Notenspur. Yeah, I think I passed it. So Leipziger Notenspur is like um, traces of notes, musical notes in the ground that indicate some uh, musical event. Um, I don't know that much about it, but I've seen those traces here too. Maybe we passed one. That's the opera. Yes, I think some people from India are connected. Um, I'd love to go to India. Just so you guys know. I'd love to go to India. I've never been to India. I didn't tell you that much about the Opera House. I wanted to spare those details for this spot here. It's another park, still in the city center. And here we have the opera from the other side, Leipzig Opera, one of the oldest public opera houses in Europe. The first building was constructed in the 17th century. And today's building dates from the 1950s. The most famous opera director was Gustav Mahler. That's the opera from the other side. There's no rain, a good connection. So I think you get a, a great impression.
So we're still in the city center. This is the opera house. And right next to it, you have a small lake, some ducks, and a beautiful park right in the city center. This is great. Ah, this is not part of my tour, but let me tell you about this building. It's another high rise in, in Leipzig. It's been built, I think, in the 1970s during um, the uh, German de Democratic uh, Republic area, uh, era, sorry. And I used to live in this building for three years uh, on the ninth floor, right there. That was great. It was really small, but I had a great view. And every day I was challenging myself on the balcony um, because of my vertigo. I'm afraid of heights. So every day I was um, training <laughs> on the balcony, looking down and trying to overcome my fear. Good night, thank you so much. I loved Sydney as midnight. David, ah, you're from Sydney. Australia has been connected. Okay, all right. Good night, David. Sleep well. Sweet dreams. Maybe you can dream about Leipzig and visit us one day here. And then you can book me as a tour guide. Maybe. Oh, look at that. This is great. Oh, look at that. Maybe I can get a little closer. Maybe it was a little afraid of me, but beautiful, right in the city center. So this is like an oasis. Someone said I might be expensive as a tour guide. Ah, it depends. It depends. No, no, no. I don't. Do, I'm not a tour guide. I'm a tour guide for you guys live on DW. Um, but I haven't thought about that. I was joking. Just come here and we can talk about the price. <laughs> that would be nice. Maybe it's for free. Okay, what's that building? Maybe you know it. Let's get closer to that building over there, behind the trees. Radisson, no, it's not a Radisson hotel. We'll walk and have a beer after. That might be a good idea. <laughs> Manali Tandon, Hauptbahnhof. Yes, you're right, it's Hauptbahnhof. Repeat after me, Hauptbahnhof. Hauptbahnhof means main train station. We have buses and trains in Leipzig. Buses, trains, trams, everything. Bicycles. Yes, this is Hauptbahnhof, Leipzig main station. And actually, to me, it's very important, this building, because it's like my second home. I'm here all the time because I travel a lot and I usually take the train. 
Leipzig is very well connected. So if you take a look at the map on Google Maps and you put Leipzig there in Germany, you can see it's in the eastern part, but a little to the center, so it's pretty good connected. So a lot of trains pass through here and the city is well connected to other cities. So from here to Berlin, it's one hour and 15 minutes by train. To Munich, it's three hours, 13 minutes, something like that. And there's a red light and I stop. To Hanover, it's two and a half hours. To Hamburg, I think it's four hours. So like I said, it's very well connected. And I think this is a great, great view of Leipzig main station. So at 80,000, more than 80,000, 83,460 square meters, it is Europe's largest railway station if you measure just the floor area. So the main station starts here, it goes all the way down there. It's a huge building with a lot of train tracks. It opened in 1915, so more than 100 years ago. And it's not just a train station, it's also a shopping mall. So if you go inside, there are two, no, three floors where you can do shopping and behind that you can find the train tracks. And on my left, there's another park. Yes, Misha is saying, lovely train station. It is, it's huge. Adrian is saying, the city is so clean. I hope my town is the same way too. Adrian, where are you living? Where do you live? Is your town dirty? Tell me about your town. Yes, I have to admit Leipzig is a clean city. Almost all the Hauptbahnhofs in Germany are really majestic. Yeah. N not, no, not all. Not all the main station buildings, but a lot. A lot of them are pretty beautiful and like old style. Yes, yeah, so. Do you live in the city center or nearby? Yes, I live nearby. So it's like a 50 minute walk from here. You can see the train station in the background and the tram station right here. That's another important junction. So everything's connected here in Leipzig. And the good thing about the about Leipzig main station is um, that the shops, some of them are even open on Sundays. That's not normal in Germany. Everything's closed on Sundays. But if you need something urgently, you can go there and buy it. <clears throat> so I think during my little tour, we passed three parks. So that's the third one. Look at the beautiful flowers. Just beautiful. All right. I keep heading into the city center to my last spot. I wanted to show you St. Nicholas Church, but I have to remind you that going into the city center where more people are, 
I gotta wear a face mask. Lucas, come by and visit Vietnam. I will guide you and you can do the same in return. All right, deal. I go to Vietnam, you give me a tour, you come here and I give you a tour. But right now it's time for... Face mask. Here we are. Ready to rumble. Now I'm fully legal behind this point. Right now we're heading to the last stop, the last spot, St. Nicholas Church in the city center. It makes me happy to see the people outside, eating, drinking, those guys, because, well, Germany is opening up again. So the infection rate is declining. We're all very happy about that. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. You can already see spot of the end of the tour, St. Nicholas Church, over there. Isabella is asking if you have to show a negative COVID test result. Uh, yes, as far as I know, you have to show a negative test result in order to eat in the outside area of restaurants. And you can be in a group with more than whew, four or five people. But actually, I'm not that sure about that because, uh, well, in these days they are changing the rules. So I'm not that up to date right now. The important information is, yes, you can go to a restaurant again after like half a year of, of everything being closed down. St. Nicholas Church, the last stop of our little tour through Leipzig. Well, the late Gothic St. Nicholas Church became world famous in 1989. Hmm, why is that? Any guess? 1989. What happened in Germany in 1989? Why is this church so famous? <clears throat> why is the church so famous? Look at that. St. Nicholas Church. Well, church is so important and famous because it was here where the peaceful revolution started. 
Yes, protest for German reunification. Yes, 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 you are all right. Peace protests. So it was here that the peaceful revolution that ushered in the end of the GDR, German Democratic Republic, began. So this is the place where uh, the ending started. So dissatisfied citizens of East Germany met on Mondays to pray for peace and then went to demonstrate. So they started inside the church, they gathered, and after that they demonstrated in 1989. So it started with a few and then they became more and more and more, but it was, well, it was all peaceful. It was all uh, quiet and peaceful. And well, that sparked the end of the German Democratic Republic. And it all started here in this church on Mondays. Yeah. I was two years old when they started to demonstrate. <laughs> and I wasn't here in Leipzig. And the peace column here reminds of the history. This is a peace column and the columns inside the church, they look pretty much the same. Let's head to another spot here. Here it says Orte der Friedlichen Revolution, so places of the peaceful revolution. There's a map and that's what I wanted to show you. That's how it looked like in 89. It says für ein offenes Land mit freien Menschen. So it's for an open country, for an open country with free people. Yes, 89. Look at them. They started the peaceful revolution. And they were a lot. And I think it's a good spot to start, sorry, to end <laughs> my little life tour for you guys. Ah, great. Once again, and for the last time, St. Nicholas Church. St. Nicholas Church with the Peace Column. That's the place where the peaceful revolution in 1989 here in Leipzig began. It was the beginning of the ending of the German Democratic Republic. All right. I'm the most enthusiastic tour guide you've ever seen. Great, I'm happy to hear that. And look at this sign. Over there I have to wear a mask. And here apparently I can take it off, so to say goodbye. I do it without a mask and it's perfectly legal. So people are saying thank you. Yes, I have to thank you because you took your time. One and a half hours with Lukas in Leipzig. I was really happy to show you around and I was really happy about the weather being so nice. So there was little rain and you could see everything uh, in a nice light. So wherever you're watching, maybe it's time to go to bed. Maybe it's time to get up, I don't know. Um, thanks for watching. And, well, see you soon, in June, with Druf. <laughs> I'm happy to, happy to get to know him.
So, thank you very much for watching and see you next time on DW Travel. Bye-bye, take care.